Hi, my name is Nama and I am a Kenyan living in New England where I am currently a graduate student in a Masters of Gastronomy program in which I spend a lot of time engaged in research, particularly of East African foodways in the hopes of fathering African food scholarship. And as a result, I began Modern African Table to be able to explore or to further explore the future of African cookery, as well as culinary traditions and stories. So food histories, particularly those of Africa, have always fascinated me, not just because I'm African, but because of the culinary legacies of Africa. And it's actually one of the main reasons I chose to study food. The other was to change how African cuisines are perceived. And so this past semester, while eating a samosa, uh, the experience triggered a memory. So growing up in Nairobi, there was a man who owned a kiosk near a busy road around the corner from my great uncle's house, where he exclusively made and sold the most delectable beef samosas, and he served them with lemon wedges wrapped in newspaper. And try as I may, I have never been able to create that samosa from my childhood, even though that memory is so vivid, that memory is so vivid. So the more I thought about the samosa... I set out to research its history and unfortunately no food histories on the samosa or just cuisines of Kenya or Eastern Africa have been yet written to my knowledge. And so I thought perhaps I could add to the conversation to see where the samosa fits into the culture and historical con context excuse me, of Kenya's culinary history. Um, because the assumption is that the samosa in Kenya is a direct result of British colonial rule. And yet the British did indeed both colonize Kenya and India. But indentured workers were brought from India to East Africa to help build the Kenya-Uganda Railroad. And so naturally when colonial times concluded, some of the Indians remained and some of their culinary traditions were absorbed by Kenyans, adding to the fabric of a national cuisine. But I think this history is incomplete because there's evidence that suggests that the samosa was indeed present in the 19th century via the Swahili coast. This is before the arrival of the British and indentured uh, Indians. So in my research, I, I sought to look for evidence that the samosa or a version of it had existed pre-colonially and before this particular historical event. So because of the pandemic, I was unable to physically access archives to see what else I could find. And so in thinking about these histories, um, I think colonization really sought to diminish them by offering oversimplified accounts. And as an example, to visit the Swahili coast, where I suspect a version of the samosa may have existed, uh, is to be made aware of the synergies that existed between Indians, Arabs, Persians, uh, and Africans in pre-colonial times, and also presently still. So the samosa has been claimed as Kenyan, <laughs> regardless of its origin in history. Um, there is, however, much debate on whether it's called a samosa or a sambusa. And for the record, in my opinion, uh, none of these are incorrect. In fact, in my research, I discovered, depending on which group of people Kenyans had had more contact with, samosa implies Indian and sambusa implies Arab. And so ingredients and methodology may differ. Uh, but what this debate sometimes neglects to acknowledge is the long and entangled history of this pastry, which also further highlights that no culture exists in a vacuum. And so Kenya's popular beef samosa is therefore an amalgamation of various cultural exchanges at different points in time. The particular use of cloves, ginger, cinnamon, as well as lemon are reminiscent of the samosas Persian and Arab roots introduced via trade between the cultures of the Indian Ocean. And so these cultures working in concert, whether intentionally or otherwise, yielded a most delicious parcel of history. So the samosa can be looked at as a symbol of resilience. It is a testament of how Africans, despite having culinary traditions imposed on them, particularly by way of colonization, are able to take them and make them their own. 
It is a reminder that each time I make or eat a samosa or any other food that is a byproduct of colonialism, that I'm in a small way honoring those who endured, persisted, and fought so fiercely to preserve our traditions, that even though our food systems and natural rhythms and genius were disrupted, we can rewrite our own food histories to reclaim what is rightfully ours. I hope you found this interesting and I look forward to having more conversation around the subject of reclamation and decolonization. And I have included a Kenyan beef samosa recipe, which I hope you'll try. And if you'd like to connect with me further, you can find me at modernafricantable.com. Thank you for watching and like we say in Kiswahili, kwaheri. <laughs>